Well, while the three and a half trillion dollar budget package is making headlines in Washington, a bill floating under the radar could reshape manufacturing in the U.S. The Industrial Finance Corporation Act introduced by Senator Chris Coons, along with other senators like Mark Warner and Amy Klobuchar, would create a government owned commercial bank that would invest in manufacturers expanding domestically. Cheddar's Alex Vicolo is here with more. Alex, it's good to see you. How does an industrial finance corporation work and does it address recent calls from both Democrats and Republicans to buy American? Hey, Kristen. Uh, what it would do is allow the federal government to invest directly into companies that it wants to support using low interest loans. In effect, this would give the government a hand in shaping industrial policy, and it would give U.S.-based manufacturers a new source of capital to help them bridge what's often called the valley of death or manufacturing gap. This is when companies looking to expand their physical footprint here in the U.S. have difficulty finding investors to take a bet on a large-scale fixed asset investment that could sometimes take 10 to 15 years to generate a return. The goal here is that by helping these companies break through that barrier, America could build up its manufacturing base in key industries and produce more goods domestically. Uh, politically, this does track with the kind of America first language we're hearing from President Biden, former President Trump, and several lawmakers on both sides of the aisle that is definitely ratcheted up in recent months and years as COVID and increasing competition from China have really raised the stakes on economic development here in the U.S. What are some examples, Alex, of industries that might benefit from the bank? So uh, the summary of the bill actually lays out some pretty interesting hypotheticals. Uh, they talk about advanced battery manufacturing, which are crucial to electric vehicles, uh, medical supplies, which have been a really hot button issue in light of mass shortages early in the pandemic, uh, less carbon intensive uh, steel production, high voltage transmission lines, and of course, uh, semiconductors. Uh, and that last one really exemplifies uh, what's at stake here in this debate. Um, the bill kind of outlines how this bank could step in and help develop some of the uh, US-based semiconductor manufacturers by buying uh, directly from them uh, so that we can maintain a supply of uh, really critical chips that would be used in things like automobiles. Mm -hmm. Now, how novel is this idea of a government-owned manufacturing bank are there historical precedents that lawmakers are looking at here? Absolutely. Uh, going back to the Great Depression, actually, there was uh, something called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, and it operated from the early 30s through to the 50s, and it supported a range of uh, industries uh, with exactly what we're talking about, uh, loans and other kinds of support, research, things like that. Uh, it was ultimately disbanded in the 1950s, uh, after World War II and when the government was trying to kind of take more of a back seat in the economy. Uh, and since then, it's really been a topic of debate among policymakers who think, you know, it would be valuable to return to that kind of policy. E even going back to the 80s, there was a lot of discussion about re uh, kind of reintroducing this kind of uh, measure to compete with countries like Germany and Japan as they develop their manufacturing sectors. Mm -hmm. um, and more recently, I think uh, there's been a return to this as you know, places like the European Union have reinstated uh, the idea of creating national banks, national industrial banks back in like 2016. So ever since then, the conversation has sort of been bubbling to the surface. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, we know leading Senate Democrats pushing the bill as we've discussed. But if it does get passed, what kind of challenges will the bank face politically? So that's a really key question, because if lawmakers do decide to embrace a more robust industrial policy, the question then becomes an industrial policy for whom and for what. Uh, right now, the bill does address some democratic priorities, such as supporting unionized workforces and addressing climate change. But going forward, in theory, this bank could support any number of things. So while there may be some pushback uh, from Republicans to specific proposals, uh, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are seem to be at least more primed for a more hands-on approach to the economy. Uh, an industrial finance corporation wouldn't settle the debate over le legislative priorities by any means, but it would provide a new tool for the federal government to direct the economy. How that tool is used uh, very well could become a major political issue and debate going forward.